Hey there, welcome back to another review, this time of another horror film from the year 1980, the movie Beyond Evil, which is directed by Herb Freed, who also helped write the film, along with David Braun and Paul Ross, and it stars John Saxon as Larry Andrews, Linda J. George, Linda Day George as Barbara Andrews, Michael Dante as Del Giorgio. Mario Milano as Dr. Albano, Janice Lind as Alma Martin, and David Apotushu as Dr. Solomon. This is also a film that features music by Pino Donaggio, and uh, cinematography by Ken Plotin, and it's edited by Rick Westover. The film wa was released independently. I don't even know if it even got a theatrical release. I know it was released on home video by Media Home Entertainment. And then later, Troma got the rights and distributed it on home video on DVD. And it's currently available on YouTube for free through Troma's YouTube channel. Now, <sighs> this is a really, really awful movie. This was a cheap, boring, not scary in the slightest horror film that was just horrible it was a real chore to sit through and this 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 might set a record for like the shortest review i've ever done for this channel let alone shortest review for this marathon because there's not much i ha not much to say about this movie basic pretty much what happens here is you have an architect played by john saxon and his uh, bride, played by Linda Day George, they are newlyweds, and they move to some place in South America. Uh, I don't even remember exactly where it was. It's somewhere in South America, and or Mexico. It could be there. It's kind of might be Mexico or, or South America. I don't know exactly where it is. It doesn't. I don't. The film doesn't really. It doesn't make it clear. I don't think it's in Mexico. I think it's like somewhere in, in South America or even Asia. I think it's actually somewhere in Asia, actually. Because I remember seeing a shot in the film that showed like uh, they were out on the town. And it looked like there was like Chinese or Asian letters on, on some of the buildings. So, yeah. Um, so, they are... Mainly they moved over here because John Saxon is working with this friend of his, played by Michael Dante, Del Giorgio, and he's, you know, he's helping him build this new industrial complex or something, and at first his friend promised them a house or an apartment, but he didn't really have one, so they're stuck with in a hotel, and uh, Linda Day George and John Saxon aren't really happy with that. And then later on, Del Giorgio gives them a house, uh, a really beautiful colonial mansion that they got for cheap because it's supposedly haunted. In the beginning of the movie, they you saw a little bit of like you saw this this haunted colonial play, you know, colonial uh, mansion. You saw laughable scenes of like these fire twirler guys, and then like some kind of. Uh, some kind of ritual or something and then uh, some girl gets her leg smashed by a stone that falls on her it, it's really it's, i don't really it's really forgettable to be honest i have a hard time of remembering what exactly happened in what order so but that's kind of how it started out with some really weird ritual and it doesn't go anywhere and then it's just Oh, Alma Martin, the ghost of Alma Martin, this house is cursed. And then it then flashes forward, you got the newlyweds, uh, Del Gi Del Giorgio gives them this colonial house. The maid, who's there, explains the story of what happened, of why it's supposedly haunted. And so you get a flashback scene, which is shot really badly. Like, it's just, it looks like it has Vaseline smeared all over the camera, and it's just shot in this weird way, and it's edited really strangely, and it's laughable, it looks so cheap, it's just a totally chunky looking movie, and so, you get this laughable flashback, and then after that, uh, 
the maid is basically saying, this place is haunted, it's cursed, don't live here, da 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 And, and uh, Don Gior Giorgio, under his breath, after he sends the maid off, says one of the few lines in the film that I actually remember actual chuck actually chuckling at, but that's only because it's just so random. He basically, she said, he sends her off, and then under his breath, he says, dumb bitch. He's <laughs> just like, what? <laughs> okay, all right. So, uh, so that happens. Del Giorgio is an asshole. Uh, that's basically the established character for this guy. I play by Michael Dante. He's not really one of the best actors either. And so John Saxon is working his architect job, and his wife is usually left at home alone in this colonial mansion. And while well, she's left with the spirit of Alma Martin, which starts to possess her. And but it, it starts out in ways that are just completely ludicrous and laughable. She's sleeping, and then she'll hear what she thinks sounds like, you know, a ghost. And it's just so over the top that it just is not scary at all. It's just laughable. Um, and the score doesn't help either because Peter DiNaggio is a very talented composer when he wants to do a good score. This is not one of those scores. This is just awful and laughable and just ridiculous and just silly. It sounds silly. I mean, there's a scene we're supposed to be scary, and you hear echo, 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 la 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 la, echo, echo, ah, ah, echo, echo, ah. It's just there's nothing subtle about this score at all. So anyway, and there's not much that happens in this movie. Linda Day George acts a little bit weird. She. Uh, so that doesn't, there's really not a high body count or anything. Don Giorgio gets tossed out, out, out of, uh, the top of, uh, the colonial mansion, like out, out of, out of the balcony to his death by a possessed, uh, Linda Day George, who was coming on to him. And I guess that those two characters used to actually date each other. So he's actually willing to get in her pants, even though, you know, he was supposed to tell her that some guy died in an accident at you know at the uh at the construction job that John Saxon is at but no he'd rather just think about getting in her pants but she's also into it too after her you know a possessed version of herself comes into play and so i mean then there's a th this other subplot with this like healer guy who i guess like does that stuff where you see healers who like take organs out of your body which has been proven to be completely fake so he's like it's some fake faith healer but i guess in this film he's supposed to be a real faith healer and he's supposed to maybe help john saxon later but he doesn't do anything with his supposed powers in fact a possessed under day george comes by and watches him try to help a little girl and basically makes things worse and basically kills the girl by making his faith healing uh stuff not work very well because what he does he just sticks his hand in your in somebody he cuts somebody's stomach open takes something out and then like doesn't even uh, stitch it up he just puts it back together with his hands like it's I, I, like it's fucking play-doh or some shit and so so this little girl dies because uh, Emma Martin is inside the uh, Leonard Day George and causes her to die and so this guy ends up teaming up with John Saxon near the end, and he doesn't really provide much of anything. He just helps him blow up Alma Martin's crypt, which is conveniently right near the house. And then it's John Saxon who comes up with a bright idea to put uh, Linda J. George's wedding ring back on her finger, because I guess that's what ends up separating the spirit from her, which doesn't make any sense, because it's been on her ring the whole, it's been on her, <laughs> the ring's been on her finger the whole time, but I guess it finally fell off, because she was finally possessed, and, uh, fully, I guess, but then when he puts it back on, then it just automatically causes the spirit to pop out of Linda J. George, and, yeah, there's this really, the only, I was only curious about this movie, for one, because of its its hilarious trailers and TV spots, where you have Linda Day George shooting green la green laser eyes out of her eye socket, she's just going, Zzz! and I thought maybe it'd be kind of you know dumb fun in that regard, but no, it isn't. It's just mostly boring and dull, 
and and the antithesis of scary or anything really horror related. It feels like a TV movie, to be honest. And so he just so so you have Linda Day George. Even those sequences are they're just very brief. She shoots laser eyes. She doesn't really do much with them. Doesn't blow anyone's heads off. Doesn't do anything fun. It's not like the movie Mausoleum with the chick with the with the tits with teeth. And she also, I think she also had like laser eyes of some sort or something. I mean, it's not like that. Like that that was actually did a better job with this type of absurd concept. This just takes the stuff way too seriously. There's way too many moments of dialogue. The death scenes are completely forgettable. One guy is at a lumber yard and some lumber falls on him. Uh, another guy gets tossed out the top of off the top of a balcony onto the ground below. Another guy it looks like he dies in a stock footage car accident. I mean, it it just it just really there's not much to it at all, really. And then it ends where the spirit laughably conveniently pops out of Linda Day George, and then it it melts. It turns into bones and then like crumbles and melts in a shitty effect. And that's beyond evil. I mean, really, that's honestly the movie in a nutshell. Most of it, if you, and there's stuff I didn't mention because there's not much worth. There's not much in this movie that's worth mentioning. You have a lot of dialogue that goes nowhere that you don't care about. And if there's anything that I did like about the film, I didn't mind Linda Day George and John Saxon's performances. But the screenplay that by three people, I can't believe it took three people to write a screenplay that's this generic and this lazy, but I guess it did. So screenplay by three people just doesn't give them much to do. So it's a waste of them. Uh, even it's even a waste of them and what and, and the chemistry that those two had. And it's not one of those so bad it's good movies or. So it's laughable and entertaining because of that. No, it's just mostly boring. And just, I do not recommend this film at all. This is a film that's so bad that you could just sum it up by its own taglines. Here, this is, this is one of the tagline, the taglines that the film has. Beyond death, beyond pain, beyond evil. That sums up my feelings on Beyond Evil rather well. Because it is. It's beyond death. It's beyond pain. And it's beyond evil. It's also beyond bad. It's beyond shitty. It's beyond boring. It's beyond lame. It's beyond lazy. It's all these different things that it's beyond. It's beyond B.O. It's just beyond bad, period. I don't know what else to say about this movie. I've said enough as it is. Um, I would definitely recommend you avoid this film like the plague. If I was going to rate it out of five stars, I'm going to give it one out of five. And it's probably being generous, but that's for John Saxon and Linda Day George and some of the unintentional bits of hilar hilarity that I had while watching the movie. But that's because I was laughing at the movie, not with it. But anyway, yeah, I do not know what else to say about Beyond Evil. Uh, but anyway, thank you for watching my uh, review, and as always, I will see you guys later. See ya.